Civilization Revolution is a spin-off of the popular strategy game Civilization, which is on PC, but for the move to consoles, they simplified various aspects to make it easier for normies, like me. Some of the streamlined elements make sense and work well for the simplified version, while others are left lacking. The game begins with a cutscene that sees a leader go through a run until we get to the title screen. While it's something that you'll probably skip after your first viewing of it, it does a good job of establishing the tone of the game. Silly, light, fun. And from there we go to start our own run. The game has a variety of civilizations, each with different perks, as a limit to one great leader per civilization and lack leaders of other areas. Like we don't have Simon Bolivar. Well, it seems like they finally added him on Civ 6, so cool, but it's not the same. Can I get him for this game? Another aspect is that they speak gibberish. It fits with the silliness. But I think it would have been really interesting to have each leader speak the language of that nation. That way we could also learn how other languages sound and possibly learn a word or two. Mini market. Like, what does Mongolian sound like? <laughs> You can go through an entire run in just a few hours, which helps keep you in the thick of things and end the game before it starts to drag. At first, yeah, it's a little goofy, your troops are basically giants and sometimes they stomp on your own people. You can even have troops from the beginning of the game marching with troops from a different time period and sometimes beat modern troops. <laughs> Covering the map in the beginning is exciting as the map changes with each playthrough so you'll urgently be running around trying to find barbarians to get some extra money or troops as well as finding friendly villages to get the upper hand before finding all your neighboring civilizations. Because soon, they'll start to attack you. The AI can be aggressive in this game as there have been many times that I was at war with everybody. And depending on difficulty, you could face some harsh challenges. Like the first time I tried out King. What happened to you? Got my ass kicked. However, as you play, you find tricks and new strategies to help you succeed and at avoiding a three-front war. But that leads to something that definitely did need some deeper mechanics, and it's the diplomacy. You don't have much control over your options in diplomacy. There's typically three options, and that's it. And sometimes certain options don't even show up. I don't know how many times I was at war with a civilization, defeating troops after troops, but yet I was always the one that had to compromise something for peace. I've defeated tons of your troops and taken a few of your cities. How about I ask you for the technology in exchange for peace? And the AI can be half hard on some occasions like declaring war together. Yeah, they'll declare war for five turns, then come to a truce. Not only that, but in those five turns they send just one troop, then it just sits there in enemy territory, and the moment five turns pass, they're over it. What? But when they're going to war with me, they have all the troops in the world and they actually attack me relentlessly? Yes, I enjoy the domination way of winning, but at times I want to focus on other things and not being able to solve conflict via diplomacy makes things difficult when I feel like I should be able to or that I'm not getting anything out of my victories when the same can't be said when I'm the one being pushed back. But I've mainly been talking about a military victory. There's also technological, cultural, and monetary victories. Cultural and economic victories are just racking enough great people by having a high culture stat. Cultural is in my cup of tea, especially when I start flipping small cities. That just motivates me to move my troops over to take the rest. A technological victory is done by discovering how to make a spaceship and sending it out to discover a new world. Until Pandorum sets in. But with all the playstyles, there's still the need to manage your civilization. Choosing to build troops or buildings, choosing science or money revenue, which technology to research next, where best to place new cities, dealing with other civilizations, and trying to be the best civilization that the world has ever seen. We are very cultured indeed. We have Salone Viewing Nights every Friday. This upcoming week we have Judge Dredd. I am the law. Drop your weapon. The core of the Civilization games are here, and as basic as it might be, I find a lot of fun with this game that Civ 6 on the PS4 doesn't offer, with just a few elements added back in, and having Simon Bolivar, as well as more great leaders to choose from, the game could be even better which is why I'm really hoping they do a sequel for Revolution one day. What's that? Th There's a sequel? On mobile and Vita? Oh, well, Sony killed off the Vita, so... On mobile? What is this, a Kingdom Hearts game? 
So maybe I'll hope for a new game on console and PC. It'll be Civilization Revolution 2.0. But not 2, because there is a 2. But it'll basically be 2 since I don't think people realize there is a 2. So 3 will be 2. The sis keep them hearts. <laughs>